Welcome back to Proxam, everybody. And today we're going to be doing a quick video on how to choose which psychic powers to take as Crawford Eldar. So this is a question that a lot of newer players have, especially when, you know, basically choosing between 18 different psychic powers between three disciplines that are available to normal Crawford Eldar. And of course, I'm talking about the runes of fate, fortune, and battle. And not only that, but we also have the Revenant Discipline for the Inari. So that's even more powers to kind of juggle around. So it can be kind of hard to decide which ones to take for which situations and also based on what kind of army you have. Those may be a little bit difficult to decide. So what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be looking at how to choose those psychic powers effectively for your army. So a quick overview of the video, we're going to be doing a overview or a quick review of all the powers from the Runes of Fate, Fortune, Battle, and Revenant Disciplines, and talking a little bit about why each power is strong and what they're used for. We're also going to be looking at which types of units work best with each psychic power. And lastly, we're going to be determining which psychic powers to pick for your Farseers and your Warlocks. So first up, we have the Runes of Fate. We have Guide, Doom, Fortune, Executioner, Mind War, and Will of Azurin. So Guide is pretty straightforward. A lot of newer Eldar players really like this ability, and honestly, it's probably one of the most popular psychic powers of all time for Eldar. It's been around since the beginning. It allows a unit to reroll all hits for one full round, and it's most effective when used on maxed out units to get the most out of it, of course, to get the most rerolls possible, and with units that have a high number of attacks. Or, in some cases, units that can both do a good job shooting and assaulting in the same turn, units like Shining Spears. And next up, we have Doom, probably the second most popular psychic power for the Crawford Eldar. Basically, you target an enemy unit and all Crawford core units that shoot or assault into that unit get to reroll their wound rolls. It's very powerful. Now this is best used on bigger enemy units or exceptionally tough targets. It's not really so good on smaller targets because you're going to be wasting a lot of its potential. So things like land raiders, terminators, giant squads of necron warriors, things like that doom is going to be the most effective on. Fortune is another popular power that's been here since the beginning. Basically, it grants the unit a 5 plus feel no pain, which allows them to ignore a wound after a failed save. This is very effective. This doesn't just work for mortal wounds. This works for every type of wound out there. So it's even going to work against the new magma rail weapons that the basically space dwarves have, the Leagues of Otan. And this works best on tougher units like Wraith Guard and Wraith Blades. It could be used on squishier units as well to make them a little bit more durable, but the amount of durability that you get from this isn't quite enough to justify on smaller units of troops, especially things like Dire Avengers or Howling Banshees. It's best used on Wraith Guard, Wraith Blades, and perhaps even Wraith Lords. Executioner is a Witchfire power. It's basically the staple Witchfire power of the Runes of Fate. It does D3 mortal wounds, and it can generate another D3 if it kills a model. This is great against high save invul units on an offensive-based Farseer. So this is great, especially in combination with Smite. You can get a lot of mortal wounds off just using these two abilities on an enemy unit. Mind War is the other Witch Power ability for the Runes of Fate. It's pretty good, but the problem with it is that it's so chancy. And what I mean by that is... Basically, you roll off with the enemy character's leadership and you cause the difference in mortal wounds. So this is good on an offensive Farseer again, and it can be buffed by lowering enemy leadership, but it's not something that you can reliably get off every turn. So it's a little bit of one of those powers that could be really good or it could just do nothing and totally whiff. So it's, it's one or the other with this power. I've gotten some great Mind Wars off where I've killed enemy characters with six wounds, and then I've gotten terrible mind wars where, honestly, if the reverse was possible, my own Farseer would have died. <laughs> Luckily, that's not a thing, right? But 
honestly, some of my rolls have been that bad with this. So it's it's give or take, but it's really a hit or miss psychic power. Then we have Will of Azurian. Will of Azurian gives a unit objective secured, and that unit can make range attacks without actions failing and makes the unit fearless. So this is pretty amazing for having a unit stand and fight on an objective. Great on units that don't have objective secured and are shooting based. Things like Wraith Guard are very good with this. Things like Wraith Lords, believe it or not, are also pretty good with this on them. This means that a Wraith Lord can take an objective away from a unit of Terminators as long as that unit doesn't have objective secured. So again, great psychic power, more of a utility power in most cases, but one that is very good and it has a lower warp charge, so it's a little bit easier to cast. And that's it for the Runes of Fate. On to the Runes of Fortune, we have Ghost Walk, Witch Strike, Impair Senses, Focus Will, Crushing Orb, and of course, Fateful Divergence. Ghost Walk is a psychic power that adds plus two to charge rolls for the unit, so this is great on units coming out of reserve in combination with Strands of Fate to guarantee charges right out of reserve. It has a low warp charge value. It does have a short range of 12, but it's absolutely fantastic when used on reserve units. Basically, you can guarantee that your unit will be able to charge right out of reserve if you cast Ghost Walk on it. So things like Shining Spears or Wraith Blades don't need to sit around for a turn waiting to be shot at before they can charge in and do some serious damage. Witch Strike. Absolutely useless. <laughs> well, kind of. Basically, each wound dealt in combat becomes a mortal wound. So if your Farseer has two attacks and you hit twice and you wound twice, you're going to be dealing two mortal wounds. On average, this is objectively worse than both Crushing Orb and Executioner, as well as Smite, to be honest with you, just based on math alone. And that's because Farseers typically have a very low attacks profile, but it's not that bad on the Corsair Wayseeker. If you already have an Executioner and Crushing Orb in your army, a Corsair Wayseeker can take advantage of this because they have a little bit of a higher attack profile, I think at three. Impair Senses disables the benefit of war abilities for the enemy unit. Now, this is typically pretty garbage because it only affects one unit, and because of how many auras are out there that don't actually count as auras, for example, Tyranid Synapse creatures and things like that, it's just not really as good anymore. It's not really that effective in most cases. It is a niche psychic power pick that you're only going to use if you have a particular enemy in mind that benefits from auras. Focus Will is a fairly good psychic power that gives plus two to any casting attempts made by the target-friendly Farseer. It's great for guaranteeing that powers go off reliably without having to use Strands of Fate for it. So this is a very good psychic power, exceptionally good at making sure that your important powers go off that turn and basically make it harder for enemies to deny those psychic powers as well. Then we have Crushing Orb, which is a Witchfire power. It deals mortal wounds on a 4+, plus, so you basically roll three dice on a 4+, plus, each one deals a mortal wound. On a 2+, plus, they deal a mortal wound if the unit is a vehicle or monster. So it really does well against vehicles and monster type enemies. And it's probably best used on an offensive farce here, to be honest. Because its range is kind of low at 18. So you want to make sure that if you are putting it on a farce here, that that farce here is more offensively kitted out or should I say offensively oriented so that you're already going to be within that range anyway when you cast this ability. Faithful Divergence is the last one here and basically Faithful Divergence is very simple just gain one command point. This is really useful now with the new drop in CP in Nephilim and it's especially useful in the first couple of turns when in some missions you will not be gaining command points in the normal way in your command phase. So very important power and probably a staple in most competitive lists with at least a couple farcers in them. Then we have the runes of battle. We have conceal, reveal, embolden, horrify, enhance, drain, empower, enervate, protect, jinx, and quicken and restrain coming in last. 
Conceal and reveal, basically conceal gives light cover and reveal negates light cover, right? It's a blessing and a malediction. The reveal part of this is a great damage multiplier for enemy units and light cover. And the essentially blessing side of this, the conceal, makes units outside of light cover a little bit tougher. Although in most cases, you're going to want to be using the reveal part of this. Embolden slash Horrify is an ability that either gives you plus two leadership if it's a blessing or minus two leadership if it's a malediction. If you choose the blessing, your unit always strikes first in combat. If you use the malediction against an enemy unit, they always strike last in combat. So it's essentially like hitting an enemy unit with a Banshee Mask. And when combined together, they can perform a leadership bomb with Mind War. So if you have a unit of Warlocks with the Battle Psyker Stratagem, you can actually negate the enemy's leadership by two and then buff your Psyker's leadership by two. And then you can create a situation where you're basically guaranteeing some mortal wounds on an enemy unit, no matter how badly you roll. Which is pretty cool, but it is risky and it does cost a lot of command points. So in most cases, it's not going to be really that worth it, but I do have a video on it if you guys are interested on my channel. So this ability is very good. I really like it. I really like especially the horrify part of this because it allows you to basically deny your opponent the use of the counteroffensive stratagem. So you make an enemy unit strike last and therefore you don't have to worry about them using the counteroffensive stratagem to kill your unit before it can attack. Then we have Enhance and Drain. Enhance gives plus one to hit in combat and Drain gives minus one to hit for enemy units. So this is great on combat units, especially when paired with rerolls of one to hit. So for example, the Utark's Path of Command, this basically gives your entire army a two plus to hit with rerolls in close combat. The drain aspect of this is fairly good against units that would be engaging your tougher elements in close combat like Wraith Blades. And can create a situation where your Wraith Blades are functioning as a huge tar pit to a lot of enemy units that are trying to get past them next up we have empower and enervate basically plus one to wound in combat and minus one to wound for enemy units same deal with enhance and drain it basically is great on units that don't already have a wound modifier so howling banshees aren't going to benefit from this but it is really good on striking scorpions and shining spears to allow them to wound on two plus against most enemies and on top of that, if you are casting the Malediction portion of it, it will make most units wound Wraith Blades on at least a 5+, plus, if not a 6+. plus. So it's going to make Wraith Blades extremely tough and durable in close combat and able to sustain through a lot of damage. Protect and Jinx, probably one of the more popular combos of the Runes of Battle. Protect adds one to the save profile, and Jinx negates one to the save profile of enemy units. So this does not add AP to weapons, this just negates it from their profile. So new things like the Void Armor ability for the Space Dwarves, Leagues of Otan, isn't going to work against Jinx. Jinx will still be able to negate an armor from them, and this is absolutely fantastic for making tough units either tougher, in the case of Protect, or in the case of Jinx making tough units easier to kill and lastly we have quicken and restrain quicken allows a unit to immediately make a normal move advance or fall back but it cannot shoot or charge and it halves the movement characteristic of enemy units and prevents them performing from performing actions if you're using the malediction portion of it so the quicken portion of it is really good for getting units onto objectives that really need to get there quickly and they don't need to necessarily shoot or charge. And of course, restrain prevents enemy units from moving, halves their movement characteristic, and also prevents them from performing actions, which can make it very hard for enemies to score victory points when under the effects of restrain. And lastly, we have the Revenant Discipline from the Yonari. We have Ancestor's Grace, Gaze of Yenid, Shield of Yenid, Storm of Whispers, Unbind Souls, and Word of the Phoenix. 
Ancestor's Grace is basically in power, just gives a target unit plus one to wounded combat, but because it has a different name, it can be cast alongside Empower. So technically you could cast it on two separate units to get plus one to wound on both of those units. You can't stack them together because you can't have more than plus one to wound, but it can be cast on two different units because it has a different name. Next, we have the Gaze of You Need, which does mortal wounds based on what you roll with a minus two modifier for single model units. On a roll of a one, you're doing one mortal wound. On a roll of a two to five, you're doing D3. And on the roll of a six, you're doing D6 mortal wounds. And again, this is good on an offensive-based Farseer in conjunction with other Witchfire powers. Then we have the Shield of You Need, which is an excellent psychic power, which gives a unit a 4 plus invulnerable save, excluding Titanic models, so you can't give a Wraith Knight this. But it's great for keeping units without an invul save alive. So things like a Wraith Lord, Wraith Guard, Wraith Blades with the Ghost Swords, and even Guardian Defenders can become much tougher when under the effects of this ability. And it doesn't have a high warp charge and is pretty easy to get off. Storm of Whispers is another psychic power that's been doing the rounds in the tournaments as far as the Inari are concerned. It does AoE mortal wounds to units within 9 inches on 3 rolls of 4+. plus. So for each unit, you roll 3 dice and on a 4+, plus, they suffer a mortal wound for each. It's great for alpha strikes or for clumps of enemy units, but it's not so great for single targets. Next, we have Unbind Souls, which is another fantastic power. Basically, six is to hit auto-wound the target in combat. So this is great for units that struggle to wound and allows units like Howling Banshees to hit far above their weight class. So even things like Storm Guardians, when under the effect of Unbind Souls, can get a lot of wounds on enemy units. And this can turn units like Howling Banshees into absolute whirlwinds of destruction. Word of the Phoenix is an interesting psychic power which allows you to revive a model. So this revives one model from a target infantry unit within six, D3 models if the unit is a troop choice, and unfortunately you cannot select Wraith units. It's great on Warlocks though because they have two wounds and have increased psychic potential the larger their unit is. So which types of units are best with each psychic power? This is a question that a lot of us ask. Now, there's basically several psychic categories and depending on what category that psychic power falls into that's going to determine what types of units are best with each power so we have damage buffs survivability buffs we have damage debuffs survivability debuffs we have direct damage and utility spells for damage buffs we have guide empower enhance ancestors grace and unbind souls so this is most effective on larger units Guide is especially good on dual roll units as you can reroll all hits for that round, shooting and combat. So Shining Spears really stand out there. Empower, Ancestor's Grace, and Enhance are both great on melee units like Striking Scorpions or Howling Banshees. And lastly, Unbind Souls is great on Howling Banshees because they get so many attacks. Next, we have the survivability buffs, which are Fortune, Protect, Conceal, Shield of You Need, and Word of the Phoenix. Fortune is great on Wraith units or large Guardian Defender units to make them extra tough and hard to remove. Protect and Conceal are also great on Wraiths. And Shield of You Need is great on Wraiths without invulnerable saves and also on Guardian Defenders. Word of the Phoenix is also most effective when used to revive Warlocks. And again, because they have two wounds each, this is a full revive, and because Warlocks get more powerful, the more models are in the unit. As far as damage debuffs go, we have Drain and Innervate. So both are fantastic when used in combination with survivability buffs to make your units really hard to kill in close combat. Wraith units, again, benefit greatly from both of these. As when used in combination, most enemy units will be hitting on a 4+, plus and wounding on a 6+, plus against Wraith units in close combat. So all of those nasty enemy close combat units that have come out recently are going to be severely hampered with this combination. As far as survivability debuffs go, we have Jinx, Reveal, and Doom. And Jinx and Reveal are great at targeting heavily armored units in cover. This makes them a lot easier to deal with. Doom is absolutely fantastic a fantastic damage multiplier that is most effective at helping your army deal with particularly big threats or big tough units that you would normally not be able to crack through that easily. 
We then have direct damage spells, which are basically all witch fire powers. Now, all of these deal mortal wounds and are fantastic at getting around enemy saves as well as invuls. And this includes the demonic save that the chaos demons just got. And this is usually reserved for a third farseer for breaking through tough enemy positions or against extremely tough targets that have high invul saves, high toughness, and just high saves in general. And lastly, we have the utility spells, Will of Azurian, Ghost Walk, Faithful Divergence, Focus Will, Impair Senses, Embolden Horrify, and Quicken and Restrain. So there's a lot of utility spells in this list. So the thing about these is the effects vary greatly, but all of them are good at helping things run more smoothly, whether it be to help guarantee a psychic power, a charge from reserve, or to prevent enemy actions while boosting your own actions. So in taking these powers, it's important to note that most of these won't always be applicable every turn, but are useful to have in your back pocket. Things like Will of Azurian. You may not be using that every single turn, but it is a good power to have in your back pocket for later in the game when you need to steal an objective away from an enemy or make sure that you can perform a psychic action by the end of your turn on some of the primary objectives in the Nephilim missions. So how do we determine which psychic powers to pick on your Farseers and Warlocks? Well, basically look at these three things. Look at your army composition to determine which buffs and debuffs work the best. Assess the weaknesses and strengths of your list so that you can fill in the cracks with the different psychic powers that might help you in those situations. And think about which powers could help you in the objective game or pull off combinations. When looking at your army composition to determine which buffs and debuffs will work the best, ask yourself these questions and look at your army. If your army has a lot of large units of 10, guide is an absolute must. It's going to help you greatly. If your army has a lot of multiple small units, then maybe doom, jinx, or reveal will be better choices for your list. And then lastly, does your army have a lot of wraith units? Well, pick up fortune, protect, or shield if you need, perhaps as all three of these abilities will help your Wraith Guard and Wraith Lords and Wraith Blades survive much longer than they would normally. The next thing is to assess the weaknesses and strengths of your list so that you can fill in the cracks. So if you're lacking something to break open heavy targets, maybe an offensive Farser can help with Executioner and Crushing Ward. Or if you're low on starting command points, if you spend a lot on things like Phantasm, Relics, or whatever, maybe pick up Faithful Divergence to pick up the slack a little bit. And if your army is weak to close combat, try Restrain to slow enemy units down so that they never reach you. And lastly, think about which powers could help you in the objective game or pull off combinations. Ghost Walk in combination with Strands of Fate can guarantee your unit can charge out of reserve. That's a very excellent combo. Will of Azurian can give a unit objective secured and potentially steal a point away from your opponent. This could be very important for later in the game when there's not a lot left on the table. And lastly, Restrain can prevent an enemy from doing actions, and Focus Will can make it much harder for your opponent to deny your own psychic powers, and much easier for you to cast your own psychic powers, which is a huge quality of life ability. So, in conclusion, which psychic powers work best in a list is a lot more intuitive than it used to be for Craft World Eldar. In the past, you basically only had a couple different psychic powers to choose from, and most of the time, basically 100% of the time, to be honest with you guys, everybody was choosing Guide, Doom, or Fortune, or any combination of the three with their two Farseers that they could choose in their list. So now, since there's so many more psychic powers... It's a little harder to choose now. So choosing which psychic powers work the best is going to take a combination of unit knowledge, list assessment, and also just play testing. If you don't know how or what psychic powers you want to take in a list or you don't know what is going to work best, my advice would be to play test a couple of different lists with different combinations of psychic powers to see which one fits best for you. Okay, that's going to be it for today's video. I want to address something really quick with you guys, though. I haven't been making videos the past couple days. I'm going to start again. I had a couple, well, I was basically out of town for the last few days and couldn't do it. 
but I am gonna start up again making more videos. This week we have a couple of videos coming out. I don't know how many of you guys saw the little short that I made on it, but we're going to be doing a video on the leagues of OTAN and how the Craft World Eldar stack up. We're going to be doing a Corsair list spotlight in which we'll be talking about a recent Corsair themed army list that I've created and that I've run in several games now and that I wanna kind of share with you guys the pros and cons of. We're also gonna be doing a short video on five new far-flung craft world combinations that you could possibly use and that are very powerful. We're gonna be discussing which combinations those are and why they're effective. And lastly, we're gonna be trying to look at a short video about a historical comparison between Hannibal Barca of Carthage and Eldrad Uthran, which I hope to be a little bit fun, even though some of the comparisons might be a little bit of a stretch. I'm hoping that we'll at least find it a little bit interesting, the comparisons between somebody who was very real and a fictitious douchebag. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Eldrad's great. All right, everybody. That's going to be it for today. I will see you guys next time. Peace out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.